All right, in today's lesson, we're going to be um, learning about classification of animals. Um, today, we're just going to look at invertebrates. So, the first thing we're going to look at is <clears throat> each of the phylums. Um, all eight of these are invertebrates, meaning they have no backbone. And then there's one phylum of animals that has a backbone. So you can see just by these numbers, most animals are invertebrates. So what does that mean? Invertebrates are animals that don't have a backbone. Uh, they make up 90%, 97% of the animal kingdom. Uh, there are organisms uh, like insects that have uh, exoskeletons. Um, and that just means that they have an uh, outer covering uh, that protects them and gives them shape to their body. So now we'll take a look at our first example of invertebrate. It's the most simple animal. It's a sponge. So we got some picture, pictures of sponges up on the screen. Um, <clears throat> the phylum name for uh, sponges uh, is Periphera. And here's some of the characteristics. Um, so they live in water. Uh, most of them could be found in the ocean. Even though they look like plants, they're actually animals. And all sponges are sessile, and that just means that they stay in one place the whole uh, throughout their whole lifetime. Uh, each of their uh, or their whole body is filled with pores, um, and they have a skeleton made of spiky fibers called spicules, um, or rubbery sponges. Um, and that's basically the the only type of um, structure they have in their body. The rest of it is just this collection of cells um, that's going to be uh, filtering out food from the water as it flows, flows through. Um, so they're all going to be filter, filter feeders. Uh, they, uh, for reproduction, they're going to reproduce asexually through budding um, and the formation of, they're called gemmules. Um, a new sponge is going to grow off from a piece of an old sponge. Um, so the DNA is going to be exactly the same. There's no mixing of male and female genes. It's just uh, uh, asexual reproduction from one sponge. <clears throat> Most sponges that are produced sexually are uh, hermaphrodites, meaning that they have both eggs and sperm. Um, they release the sperm into the water. It floats until drawn into another sponge where it will fertilize an egg. Um, the larva develops in the sponge. It's going to leave and settle to the bottom where it's going to grow into an adult. Um, so pretty simple uh, reproduction in sponges. And then we'll end with some more cool pictures of sponges. Um, and here in this picture you've got, um, like if you've ever seen a dried sponge, if you ever did like printing in elementary school with paint and sponges. Our next group is called uh, our nidarians, and they're composed of corals, hydras, and jellyfish. So some of the characteristics of them. The word nidarian comes from the Greek word for nettle. All nidarians have stinging cells called nematocysts and tentacles surrounding their mouth. <clears throat> nidarians are more complex than sponges, and that's because they've got uh, some more complex tissues. Um, they've got a gut for digesting food, and they have a nervous system. Um, it's not like our nervous system with a spinal, spinal cord. A nidarian's nervous system is just a neural net um, that uh, goes throughout its body. And they have two basic body shapes. Um, they've got a medusa shape and a polyp shape. Uh, the polyp's usually found um, in, uh, is usually sessile, meaning it's just stuck to a rock or stuck to the ocean floor, and it looks like a vase with tentacles at the end. And then there's the medusa shape, that's the free-swimming um, bell shape and what you would think of when you think of a jellyfish floating through the ocean. They can reproduce sexually and asexually. Um, for asexual reproduction, they'd form a polyp, um, and that would form the polyp, and then it would bud off. Uh, some polyps all also reproduce sexually by releasing sperm or eggs. Um, 
And for a typical jellyfish, that medusa form has a two-stage life cycle um, in which they produce both sexually and asexually. So for the next, um, let's see, I think it's one, two. For the next three slides, I'm going to give you detail about sea anemones, hydras, and jellyfish. You don't have to write this down. You can just watch. Um, it's just going to be some extra information about them. So sea anemones and corals um, are polyps their entire life. Uh, they could be they could look like a brightly colored flower, like this example over here. Um, they typically live in colonies. They have a soft tube-like body with a single opening surrounded by arm-like parts called tentacles. Um, and they feed by catching tiny animals in their tentacles. Hydras are um, really small. They live in uh, fresh water and spend their entire life as a polyp. Um, they have tentacles on them that they can use to catch food. And they're able to move from place to place. And they're going to reproduce asexually by budding. And that's just where you have one organism and uh, that's an adult form, and it just creates an exact copy of itself that splits off and then separates to form the second adult. Okay, and then our last example for nadarians is jellyfish. Um, they spend most of their life as a medusa shape. They swim, they can catch fish and other animals in the tentacles, um, and they can reproduce sexually produced polyps. Um, each polyp produces reproduces asexually to form a new uh, medusa. Okay, um, now we're going to get into worms. There's three types. There's flatworms, roundworms, and segmented worms. The most simple type is the flatworm. Um, <clears throat> they've got long, flattened bodies, um, a very simple body form. Uh, they're the first of our animal phylum that has bilateral symmetry. Um, an example of a flatworm would be a tapeworm, and its lifestyle is parasitic. Um, each segment of its body has got a, it's a packet containing sperm and eggs. Um, when fertilized, uh, the egg fold segment is going to break off, uh, pass out of the um, pass out of the host, and there can be up to eighty thousand eggs per segment, um, and that's the way a tapeworm is going to spread. Uh, it lacks a digestive system, and it just absorb, absorbs nutrients right uh, from the host's intestines into its body. Here's some other examples of flatworms. Uh, these would be ocean-dwelling flatworms. Next up, we have roundworms. Roundworms are pretty interesting. They're the most um, widely spread organism in the whole world of any organism. Um, and millions can be found in just one acre of soil. Uh, they have round bodies. Uh, it's a tube within a tube is the body plan. Um, and you have a digestive tract with a mouth uh, and an anus. You have opening and exit for um, food. They live in damp places. Um, they can also live inside humans and other animals. An example of that would be a heartworm. Um, and it's passed into a dog can get it or a cat can get it from a mosquito bite. <laughs> They, uh, they too can make people uh, and animals sick, um, but they have a variety of lifestyles and diets. They could be decomposers, some can be predators, and some can be parasites. Here's some pictures of roundworms. Um, and then our next group, our next phylum is uh, Annelida. Uh, they're segmented worms. Your typical thing that you're going to think of when a segmented worm is an earthworm, um, but also composed in this group are leeches um, and marine worms. Um, their bodies are divided into a repeating segment. So each segment has nerves, um, blood vessels, and a section of the digestive tract. Um, and their body plan has a colon, um, it's just an open body cavity. They have a closed circulatory system um, and complete digestive system with two body openings. So just like our roundworm, they've got a mouth, um, digestive tract, and an anus. Um, they prefer burrowing through mo moist soil. Um, this allows them uh, to move easily and keeps them from drying out. 
So again, just like uh, with the last section, this set of slides um, here is one that you don't have to take notes on. Let me give you detail about uh, earthworms and leeches. So earthworms have more than 100 body segments. Um, they have external bristles um, called setae and um, muscles to help them move. They eat their organic material and soil. Um, and they are actually, their breathing, uh, the respiration for uh, earthworm is through the mucus covered skin. And that's what uh, the body plan for an earthworm. You can just take a look at it. You don't have to draw it or, or um, take notes on it. Uh, we also have leeches. Um, they have flat bodies. They have a sucking disc at uh, both ends. Um, and they can store enormous amounts of food um, uh, over months. Um, they secrete something called heparin, which is going to prevent blood from clotting. So that's why they can uh, stay attached and keep drinking uh, blood. Okay. Um, and then the last part is this marine worms. Uh, they have, again, they have the similar bristles or setae for moving. They can be filter feeders, they can eat plants or decaying material, um, and they can, some of them are also predators. Okay, um, and that's the last section of notes for um, uh, this, this evening.